Hello again, my name is Vance, and if you've been tuning in, uh, today I'm going to show you how to create some data members in Rational Developer for System Z. We're going to be actually working on the mainframe, uh, creating some JCL to compile, link, and execute a COBOL program and then we're going to look at the output of that program. So let's get into that, bring up our virtual machine, and you can see I'm already connected to the mainframe. Uh, here in my data sets, you'll notice that I've created quite a few from the last time uh, in the last video. And we'll begin with the uh, source code for the COBOL program. I've got it stored right here you just double click on it and we'll pull that up in the editor and so those of you in the 3322 class probably recognize this program this is lab 4 uh, this is actually Professor Hyduke's solution for the lab and I just kinda copied and pasted it over here for testing purposes uh, we'll leave that up and we'll jump over here to the JCL well, JCL is the job control language and basically this is the program that you run to run other programs. Uh, the mainframe is kind of weird like that but that's just what you have to do. Uh, I won't go into the details on what everything is here but uh, this is the job name the first thing you see here that's the name I give to this job and in this first section what I'm doing, this is the compile stage. I run this program, IGYWCLG. That's the procedure that will uh, carry this compile link go all the way through to completion. Uh, the first stage, I just pointed out the source code for the COBOL program. In the second stage, I have the link edit. Uh, and here's where if you you don't actually have to specify this line if you don't uh, it'll just create a temporary executable uh, for the go phase if you do specify it you'll actually get an executable that it'll save here and that way you don't have to compile and link over and over every time uh, you just want to run your program but uh, that's what I'm doing here I'm uh, linking the program and storing it here in vmorris.cobol.load lab04 and you'll see that it's there executable and then uh, the final phase is the go phase here and this is where you specify the DD names uh, for your uh, files that you're going to use for input and output in your source code so here I've got uh, the assigned to statements assigned to in file assigned to out file here I've got in file and out file so I can this is where I tell the mainframe where my input file is located and where my output file is located uh, so the input file I specify here is input.csrreg and I can come over here and look at that and it's just the same input file that we had for the lab uh, line sequential etc back over here in the out file I am specifying a file um, name here that doesn't exist vmorris.output.lab04 you'll notice there is no output.lab04 over here uh, so I give it a disposition new catalog and delete what that tells uh, JCL to do is uh, create a new one catalog it and if for some reason uh, the program borks and breaks down delete whatever might it might have made in that in that place so this delete is just kind of a uh, fallback if something fails just delete that that output data set uh, give it some space properties and then some record descriptor block here uh, and then this uh, sys out is for the um, for any other output from the system it'll just dump it in the uh, in the SDSF output there uh, so once you've got all this ready 
basically it's real simple you can just right click in the white space here and submit at the bottom or you can right click on the actual file over here and submit it and you'll get a message saying such and such job has been submitted um, click OK and right down here at the bottom you're gonna have JES and my jobs and it's empty but uh, you can right click and refresh or just click on it and hit F5 and you'll see that I've got a job there now and this is the output from the job that I just submitted you can just double click on it and it's all right here now this is all the output from the compile the link and the go phase uh, it doesn't show the output from the actual COBOL program because remember that my out file is getting dumped into a new data member here uh, and you'll notice it didn't refresh there's still no output file here so what you actually have to do is come up here to my data sets and refresh that and there it is vmorris.output.lab04 we'll open that up and there it is that's the output from the COBOL program it read in that data file uh, did some processing on it and generated this report so got that working uh, I want to show you what this looks like on the green screen uh, just so you can see the benefit of using RDZ versus using the ISP, uh, ISPF uh, terminal window. So what I'm going to do is just purge my my job output here, and I'm going to delete this output data member. So we're back to uh, where we were at before we ran that program, and I'm going to right-click on the connection, go to Host Connection Emulator. I'll need to log in here. My profile on the mainframe is still a little messed up, so I'm getting some strange errors there. But it works. So, to submit your job in ISPF, you actually have to go to where the JCL is at. Um, we do that by going 3.4. come in here browse that and there it is I can edit oh, members in use because I have it open over here let's go ahead and just close these out so they're not locked I'll try that again and there it is same thing uh, that we just saw in the editor we've got it here um, you can type in submit right here and it will submit this JCL or if you are just looking at it right here you can do the same thing submit and you'll get some feedback saying that the job has been submitted and you'll get when the job is finished you'll get a uh, return code and that's what we're looking at here you want to see a zero that's the uh, indicator that everything ran great and then it just takes you back to where you were so to see your output, of course, we're outputting to that data member. And there it is. We'll just browse that. And there's the, uh, there's the report. Uh, if you want to see your JCL output, you actually have to go all the way back out to your primary option menu and type in SDSF. Uh, that will take you to, oops, sorry, just SD. That'll take you to the um, menu here. Now, if you were actually, let's say you were deep down in here somewhere and you wanted to get to your SDSF output real quick, you just put an equal sign at the beginning here and do SD, and it takes you straight there. The same thing, go equal 3.4, and it takes you there. So go back here, and you want to view your output queue. So type an O. And there's the job output. You can come down here and select that and view your JCL output just like that. The page down is F8, page ups F7, scroll right is uh, F11, scroll left F10, 
and uh, you'll want to get familiar with what it looks like in your JES JCL uh, job output log uh, right here you'll see return codes you'll always see these right at the top and this will give you a, an indicator of where your JCL may have crashed if uh, you see anything other than a zero in your RC column that means that the uh, program crashed or there was a problem at that point in the execution and uh, then you can scroll down and and try to find some more detailed information as to why exactly there was an error